Hello everybody, welcome to my live video. Um, I'm Andrea and if you're watching on YouTube, welcome to my channel and if you want to subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when I post more videos. I'm Andrea, I'm a nutritional therapist and I love to help women in men perimenopause and menopause to find solutions to their symptoms and their issues so they can find solutions um, and be able to go on and create healthy lives. So my video today, I want to talk to you about poop. And I love to talk about poop, I don't know about you, because I've had my fair share of poop in, in um, over my, uh, my adult life and uh, lots of issues. So if you're somebody who's going to the toilet more than they should be doing, or maybe a bit of constipation, then stay tuned because I want to help you and give you a few tips and to talk to you about poop today and I know a lot of you find it can find it really embarrassing about talking about your poop um, and especially worrying about your the wind that's coming out of your bottom you know is it going to smell um, especially if you're around some friends or around your boyfriend and you know, your body can be telling you I need to go to the toilet and, and you're thinking I can't go I'm at my friend's house or I'm at my boyfriend's house or you're somewhere that's not familiar or you're you maybe in the workplace and you're scared of going to the toilet in the workplace so you're waiting then to get home till you get home so you can go to the toilet when you get home when you get home it's like oh dear I've missed my poop window because now it's not going to happen now that I'm constipated because I've sucked it in too long and it's not going to come out anymore um has this happened to you? You know, I know it's happened to me. You know, I've been somewhere where I just don't go because I don't know if it's going to smell or, you know, it's quite embarrassing, isn't it? When you, you feel like you just can't go because you feel uncomfortable in somebody else's house. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to know your stories if you want to let me know if you've had any uh, any funny stories that you um, in the comments below. I'd love to know. Um, so, yeah, so if you're constipated if you're sucking it in and you're not going to the toilet when your body tells you to go then the you know your poop can contain toxins and and when that's stuck in your colon stuck in your, in your large intestine then those toxins can be reabsorbed back into your body and they can create loads of problems with your hormones and you don't want that to happen do you um so how regular should you be? Well, the you ideally need to go once a day, you know, not every other day. It has to be regular, ideally first thing in the morning, because overnight your, your body has been um, detoxing and it's been digesting the rest of your food. So in the morning, you know, you should be eliminating first thing in the morning, ideally because um, it takes about 24 hours for your food, everything, all your food that you're eating to bit process through your body and come out through your colon. Um, so if you're not going at least once a day, twice a day is better. If you're not going at least once a day, then you have constipation. And so what, as well, what should your poop look like? Do you inspect your poop regularly in the toilet? probably don't don't regularly check it I know that I do now I do regularly check mine because I'm still I'm, I'm healing my digestion still um, and so I want to know what it looks like I want to know the shape of it and are there, are there any is there any food in my stool that I'm not digesting very well so that's a big telltale sign that your digestion is not working correctly if you've got some food stuck in your stool um ideally your 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 poop should be dark brown and it should be smooth and it should sink to the bottom of your toilet if you're having poop that's a light brown color it's got knobbly bits in it it's floating on the top then that's an indication you might have some problems with bile flow you're not generating enough bile you're not you're not processing your fats very well you're not digesting your fats very well and, and if you've got diarrhea, then that's also an issue. And if you have like little pellets coming out, uh, then that's also an issue. So if, if it's anything other than dark brown and it's smooth and it's in like a long shape, long thin sausage type shape, 
then then you have some digestive issues that you need to get to grips with um, and it shouldn't smell really badly and you shouldn't have to wipe more than about three times so it, it can indicate that you've got a lot of mucus and a lot of damp in your body if you're having to wipe numerous times you just can't seem to get your your backside clean after you've pooped is, is a big sign that you've got a few issues as well um, and there's a right way to poop. Did you know that, you know, that the, the best way to poop is to, to crouch down, you know, like the squat position, because it opens up your bowels better. So the, a, lot, a lot of the modern day toilets, they're just not really good for great poop. Um, because you want to, if you can, if you can get a stool to put, stand your feet on, so you're raising your legs up a bit, that can really help to move your bowels better and get everything out better. Um, yeah, so I, I have this little stool. You can get like bigger stools, but you know, those kids stools that you can get, but you want to get one a bit, bit, a bit bigger so you can raise your legs up a bit more um, and that will really help a lot. Um, so as, as it surprised you about what I've just said about how regular should go, what your poop should look like, um, and if you've got any issues with your poop, um, then they can be causing some digestive problems and some problems with your hormones. There's lots of other things um, because your gut garden plays a massive part with your hormone balancing and um, it's really, really important to look after your gut. So that's the number one thing that that's going to affect your, your poop and your constipation, how regularly you're going and how and what your poop looks like. And there are some things that I just want to go through that can affect your poop why you're not going um, regularly. So stress is a massive one because, you know, I talk about stress a lot and it, and it does affect your digestion. It can affect your stomach acid, it can affect how well your digestion's moving because you're under stress. So when you've got a lot of stress, your digestive system is not working at optimally. It's like only working like half the speed. And if you think about your digestive tract, it's a big muscle. It's a, it starts in your mouth and it ends in your anus. And it's a, just a big, long muscle. And it's pushing, constantly pushing food through your digestive tract. Down, down you, um, you swallow your food into your stomach and then it moves through all the different parts of your small intestine. And it eventually gets into your large intestine to be pushed out. And so... Minerals can play a massive part in your digestion, your calcium, potassium, because they regulate your hydration in your body. So if you're hydrated, then that can affect your constipation. And, and then there's magnesium, you've got your calcium, magnesium, your potassium and your sodium. So sodium, potassium affects your water balance. Your calcium, magnesium is your calcium is your contracting your muscle and magnesium is relaxing your muscle. So that has to happen to move that muscle of your digestive tract. And your sodium potassium controls the, the, the uh, water levels in your body, amongst other things as well. So if you've had a ma massive amounts of stress over years and years and years and years that you've not got under control, it can affect your thyroid, it can affect your adrenal gland health, and, and then that can affect your mineral balancing because your, your adrenal glands do affect your sodium potassium balancing. Um, and your thyroid, if you've got problems with your thyroid, if your thyroid's sluggish, then that can affect um, how well your digestion's moving as well. Um, like I said, your gut health is massive. Your diet, if you're lacking fiber in your diet, if your gut microbiome is not healthy, so this is your good bacteria. If you have an overgrowth of the bad bacteria, um, because what you eat will affect that gut health. And if you, there's another mineral called copper, if that's, um, if your body's not using copper correctly, because copper can be your antibacterial, it can help to kill off the, the pathogens that are coming into your diet and swallowed into your stomach. And, and if your stomach acid is low, then it's not going to kill off all the pathogens either. Um, so you, you, your copper levels will control your candida and candida can overgrow in your digestive tract, then you can have gut infections as well that you may not know about. H. pylori can affect your B12 levels, that can affect your constipation, can affect your poop as well, your B12 levels. 
Um, so you can see there's so much that can affect your poop and it can be so many things that are going on with your body. So how can you work on working through resolving some of these issues um, to, to get to the causative factor that's causing it? Um, I, what I would do first of all is check on your hydration. I forgot about mentioning exercise as well. Exercise is important. So if you're not doing regular exercise, that can affect your, your digestive moving as well if you're not moving it correctly. So, um, so I would look at cutting out dairy and uh, gluten to help with your digestion, just to help and see if it's ca causing some problems. Um, reduce your stress because stress is massive with your digestion. Like I say, your digestion is not going to be working properly if you're really stressed out and you're uptight. And look at your diet and get more fiber in your diet um, to help with your irregularity. And, and that will also help increase your gut garden um, with um, the good bacteria that's in there because they feed on fiber and then it will, it will increase your microbiome and increase the diversity of the microbiome, the bacteria that you have in your digestive tract. Then regular exercise, movement, movement, because like you say, this muscle has to be moved. So some movement exercise will help move that digestive muscle. And, and pro probiotics, you know, getting in some sauerkraut, some kef kefir, um, get a really good probiotic. I like Megaspore probiotics, they're really excellent. And your minerals, you know, you drink your water with sea salt to help them, because they, sea salt contains like electrolytes, can help replenish your electrolytes. And when you're drinking at least eight glasses of water a day. If you're having a pinch of sea salt with a few of those glasses of water, then that can help get that water into your cells. It can help hydrate you better. Um, so the fiber and the hydration is important to form your stools to help it to, to come out of your body. Um, and then there's ginger. Ginger can really help with digestion and um, as well. And check your magnesium levels because magnesium a lot of people are, are deficient with magnesium now and, I, and stress will deplete your magnesium a lot and in perimenopause your body's under a lot of stress and menopause you can have a bit of stress in menopause as well so magnesium supplementation can help um, with all those as well so hope that's helped you um, identify your poop and if you have any problems with it and if you've got any questions at all please put in the comments below. If you're watching my video, if you're on the replay, please put hashtag replay, say you've watched my video, so that uh, you watched it. Um, if you want more help from me, if you're really struggling with your digestive health, like I have all my life, um, I just can help you so much um, because it is, it's a big passion of mine is digestive health because I've suffered with it all my life and I um, know how, can, how to help you get to grips with your digestive issues. So get in touch, let's have a chat together or come and join my perimenopause class that I run every month. Um, get on the wait list and I'll let you know when I open the next class. Um, so you can join and get my one-to-one -one support for 30 days. I'll put the link to that below. So thanks for watching today. I'll send you lots of love and, and I'll see you again soon. See you later.